city I've been browsing. Treading water that they drown. My head on a swivel. Yeah. It's only really my surroundings. Hello and welcome to episode 222 of the Smash Accept Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Royer. You can find me on Twitter at DynastyDadFF. Today we're going to talk about 22 running backs in episode 222, worth a 24-2. You know, we're at nobody better to talk about running backs than the running back guru himself. You know, we were talking a little bit before this, and it's like when people want to talk about quarterbacks in the class, they talk to me. When they want to talk running backs, they talk to this guy. Snoog, how you doing today, brother? Feeling good, Dad. I had to bring out the Guido shirt to talk running backs with you. This is a big show, so I'm excited. I mean, we love doing this. Last year, we crushed the running back values. And and this year, weaker class, but there's still going to be values, right? Draft capital is going to lift these guys up boards. We're going to kind of help you out who you need to draft and who you need to avoid. I love it. Breaking out the inner Guido. Speaking of which, when it comes to the 2024 class, hey, how you doing with these guys, huh? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, Blake Corm is the guy that, Everyone's so scared of just because of the age, but I think everybody has to take into account the 2025 running back class is going to come in like a bulldozer and probably end the pro careers of a lot of these players that we're hyping up right now, just in terms of fantasy value. Yeah. Right? Like we got a lot of good role players, plus plus upside in this class, but there's no Quinchon Judkins. There's no Ollie Gordon. There's no Ashton Jonty from Boise state. Like, we got to take the values. I don't care if Blake Corm's 23 years old. He's mm-hmm. pro ready. He's going to play day one. If he gives me an RB1 season in his rookie year, I, I I made out with that second round rookie pick. Yeah, I was looking at Corum earlier today. And like since 2018, there's only been four running backs to go over 50 career touchdowns, which he had 58, 50 career receptions, and 4,000 all purpose yards. It was ETN, Brees Hall, Royce Freeman, and Blake Corm. I mean, Blake Corm is in my mind, and, and I've, I've come around with you. You know, you've kind of been steering that ship as the RB1 of this class because he's the most all around. He's the most balanced. He's the the safest pick. You know, like I I love Jonathan Brooks throughout the entire process. And we're going to talk about him later, you know, but he's bouncing back off of injury. And Jalen Wright had a phenomenal pro day or um, combine, I should say, and has a ton of upside. But I think just the safest pick is Blake Corum. To your your point earlier, and I don't want to get past this before we we dig more into Corum, is I've been talking to a lot of people and talking about where the windows are for quarterbacks, where the windows are for wide receivers, where the windows are for running backs. And in a super flex draft right now, I mean, you look at the second round, and this is why we keep talking about seconds. You know, as of right now, before we get landing spots, you could have six, seven running backs go in that second round. But one quarterback leagues, and this is what I keep telling everybody. Everybody's like, hey, what do I do with 106, 107, 108? And this is a class where it's like most years you're like, oh, sweet. I get the the wide receiver two of the class at, at 107 because there's so many running backs. Next year, your one quarterback rookie picks are worth so much more than they are this year. This year, you know, you have your three elite wide receivers. You have Brock Bowers. And then at 105, you're debating between taking a quarterback already or Brian Thomas or Xavier Worthy or hoping one of these running backs lands in Dallas or, you know, with the Chargers. But if you have a mid first right now, it's time to sell that mid first for a 25 first plus. Because if you can deal the 107, which might be Blake Corum, you know, for a 25 first plus a James Conner, now you get James Conner as a rental for this year. And then you get a running back better than Blake Corum next year. And I had to get out there because I had so many of you guys reaching out and be like, what do I do with my one quarterback rookie drafts? It's 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 just that simple. Trade into 25 for a random one. Get a Aaron Jones. Get a James Conner. Get a Joe Mixon. And get yourself set for next year. I love that play. I, I think James Conner, I love that you brought that guy up. He's a guy that was great last year. I was running through his numbers and kind of diving through his tape. He looks like he unlocked the, the inner old version of James Conner in himself just with his explosiveness and how he was running behind a Arizona Cardinals team that sucked. Like, they weren't a good team. Yeah. Kyle Martin, they, they were relying on Joshua Dobbs to make big plays for 